There are new warnings that the United Kingdom and the United States withdrawal from Afghanistan could leave the country as a haven for terror planning. Afghan security officials have warned that the Taliban could renege on its promises to prevent terror groups such as al-Qaeda operating from within the country. Uh, well, uh, joining us now is Afghanistan's national security ad advisor, Hamdullah Mohib. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us, uh, Hamdullah Mohib. Uh, do you feel let down by the United Kingdom and the United States uh, in pulling out? We uh, are dealing with the consequences of the withdrawal of uh, uh, U.S. troops. Uh, we, we knew this was happening and this was going to come. Uh, the timing of it was a little bit earlier than uh, previously anticipated. Um, uh, but uh, you know, it's, it's down to the Afghan National Defense and Security Forces to secure and stabilize Afghanistan, and that's what we are focused on. You're obviously trying to do that, but uh, certainly here... Uh, in the United Kingdom, there have been a lot of reports of, of the Taliban making quite significant territorial gains. That, that, that is an accurate picture, isn't it? Uh, that is an accurate picture. Indeed, um, the vacuum created by the withdrawal of uh, foreign uh, air power uh, made it very difficult for us to supply some of those remote outposts and uh, districts. Um, via air. Um, so um, it, it had a cascading effect, but none of the territory the Taliban has taken um, is, is permanent. Uh, the Afghan uh, people themselves are, are rising against the Taliban in their own villages and districts. And um, uh, today, uh, again, this is the 10th district uh, the Afghan uh, National Defense and Security Forces took with the help uh, of uh, the people of those uh, of those districts. So um, much of this uh, um, progress uh, that the Taliban uh, are celebrating is um, uh, is very temporary. I, much of the work uh, done, certainly by uh, UK forces in recent years, has been in supporting and training Afghan forces. Uh, do you think the government forces are now stronger than they've ever been? Absolutely. Uh, I think with every year, every passing year, we have made progress. The UK uh, had been uh, engaged in helping us build some of our uh, special operations forces with the police um, and also uh, uh, and with, with, the, uh, with the rest of the ANDSF. Uh, and those are some of our most capable forces and are currently engaging the Taliban in offensive operations uh, and defending some of the difficult, the most difficult terrain uh, possible. So um, we are we are very proud of our our forces, and um, um, we're thankful for the partnership that we have had. And um, uh, as a result, the capabilities left in Afghanistan is giving us um, a chance for stabilizing our country. What is the state of uh, negotiations with the Taliban? We know there's been one roundtable session. Are, are those negotiations getting anywhere? We haven't yet seen the Taliban negotiate in earnest. They're sticking to uh, a very rigid point um, and want to... Uh, use the negotiating as a point uh, to further their military agenda and uh, lobby for their military uh, uh, purposes. Um, yet so far, there hasn't been um, any uh, movement from the Taliban uh, that would could be uh, classified as um, uh, as genuine efforts for peace. What do you make of the claims that some have made that they're reformed, that they're not? Uh, so repressive towards women or girls' education. In other words, the suggestion that uh, the Afghan people could could live with uh, some sort of Taliban rule. The districts that the Taliban have taken, they have brought back uh, their uh, um, brutal ways uh, of ruling. Uh, and um, we are getting many, many messages um, from all those districts and there are uh, uh, complaints throughout about what the Taliban have been uh, doing in those districts. It's, um, uh, it's one thing to hear the Taliban uh, make uh, public uh, comments about what has changed. Um, the reality is that um, uh, they're not very different from what the Taliban were 20 years ago. 
uh, and the expectation um, that um, that they will is, uh, um, I think, a little unrealistic. And what do you know, if anything, of uh, terrorist groups, uh, Al Qaeda, and obviously is Islamic State has also uh, grown up in the last twenty years of coming into t Taliban-controlled areas and using to suppress? Is that happening? The Taliban have never parted ways with terrorist groups. Uh, there are numerous groups that operate uh, with, the, with the Taliban, alongside the Taliban, um, and have been uh, closely allied uh, with them from the beginning. It it's, it's, it's would be impossible for them to separate the, them, themselves from these groups. Um, uh, in, uh, in, this, uh, in, in the Western world, um, there, there is this thinking that perhaps uh, you know, these groups are op operate in silos, the Taliban operating in silo and then Al-Qaeda uh, and Daesh. While their management uh, may be uh, different, uh, their management structures, uh, they all rely on uh, those very basic fundamental, fundamentalistic ideologies that um, give them uh, uh, the uh, base of operations. And they cooperate very closely as, uh, as an example. Uh, IMU, the um, uh, Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan, uh, is an affiliate of the Taliban, but it has pledged allegiance to Daesh, uh, yet they collaborate very closely. So it's, it's, a, it's a collaboration of these three groups in, uh, uh, in destabilizing Afghanistan and creating a uh, ground for uh, terrorism to flourish. Um, so we cannot really separate them and put them in separate categories. And for the Taliban to say that they have um, severe ties with any, any group uh, has been proven wrong by the Afghan government several times uh, by arresting uh, al-Qaeda members and uh, operating against al-Qaeda elements in uh, Taliban-controlled areas. Finally, looking broadly at what's happened since 9-11 since in the last 20 years, Massive loss of life, massive military investment in Afghanistan, and yet some people are saying the country is effectively on the brink of civil war. What's gone wrong? I mean, I mean, how's this been able to happen? There must have been a lot of support from somewhere coming for, for, for the Taliban forces. Well, the Taliban have had safe havens in Pakistan uh, throughout this period. They enjoyed... Uh, their leaders enjoyed living uh, the, uh, at peace in, uh, in, in, in Pakistan. Uh, their injured were treated in, uh, in Pakistani hospitals. Um, uh, they had military and uh, uh, um, uh, emotional support and financial support from uh, elements within the Pakistani military establishment. Um, and it continues to be the case. Um, so um, every year the Taliban were defeated in Afghanistan, uh, but they had an opportunity to recuperate, to re-recruit people from, mad from madrasas uh, in Pakistan and bring them back the next year. Uh, and uh, even this year, uh, we estimate that uh, 10,000 fighters have come uh, in from Pakistani madrasas to fight in Afghanistan this fighting season. Uh, and their uh, intelligence show that they, they could be as many as 15,000 more uh, uh, um, uh, new recruits coming towards Afghanistan. So um, it, it, is, it, it was uh, possible for the Taliban um, uh, to uh, reinvent themselves, uh, relaunch their attacks as a result of this, um, this safe heaven that they enjoyed. Uh, uh, right next door. Hamdan Mahib, thank you very much indeed for joining us.